Hello Chess friends and welcome to Yes Out of Chess channel and welcome back to our common chess games played by computer series. So in this series we're following some great games that have been played by top engines and today I've decided to show really wild attacking destructive game played by Stock15 against another top engine rebel. I found this beautiful game on this beautiful website on the CCR Chess Dome website you can also check it out. It's in my opinion one of the best websites about chess because you have the opportunity to download all of the PGNs played by top engines maybe in some openings that are bothering you you can also for instance you can download uh, just some Rui Lopez games you can just download some Italian games uh, you just can download maybe some Queen's game decline game so whatever bothers you I think whatever opening is bothering you you can also uh, check out uh, the play, uh, played games by stock for uh, stock for 15 and played by also some other top engines because I think they are very important these games that these top engines have played because uh, they have introduced to us many new ideas many opportunities for both sides so it's quite remarkable this uh, beautiful website and if you're not interested maybe in some openings if you just want to see maybe the games that are sorted out by top engines you can also just check out the stockfish games you don't have to maybe uh, download some low rated uh, engine games you just check out the best engine games uh, played by stock 15 so as i said it's really really wild uh wild uh, chess website please check it out and as i said have fun and learn something new so let's see now this beautiful game uh it's stockfish against rebel in the french it's still in so called time Taimano variation. Uh, the Taimano variation is now one of the most often and most popular openings that's played by Black. It's it's um, really beautiful opening I would call it because it has so many opportunities for both sides. So it's sort of a double-edged opening. And that's what we want to see, of course, opportunities, wild tactical ideas, and sharp, sharp tactical shots. So let's see now what happens. So as I said, Stockfish against Rebel in the French Sicilian. So e4 was played by the fish. We have c5 by uh, Rebel knight to f3 e6 the french and ceiling d4 c takes d4 knight to d4 knight to c6 and after knight to c3 we have now queen to c7 so this is now the so-called bastard of variation queen to c7 is a provocative move uh, because uh, black is hoping for sort of that you play maybe something like uh, knight to b5 then we have the opportunity to retreat here to b8 uh, so far the queen is a little bit cornered but stays now on this very uh, very active diagonal and in the later stage of the game from black's perspective we're trying a6 then the knight maybe has to retreat and then uh we could search maybe for a beautiful expansion here on the queen side with the move b5 so this is now one of the main strategic goals for black so that's why after move queen to c7 stockfish didn't want to play this move knight to b5 because it's not occupying the d6 course so far even if the queen moves here to be still black as a good protection of this weakness here on d6 so in the continuation we have bishop to e2 uh, knight to f6 uh, we have uh, kingside casting bishop to e7 so black is also preparing uh, to secure the king by casting and now bishop to e3 kingside casting played by a rebel so okay let's stop and again evaluate a little bit position talk about here uh, some common strategies as we said uh, main goal of blacks is this uh, queen side attack a6 b5 and also what we could talk about uh, as a strategic goal is the move d5 i think the d5 goal is one of the most important goals here for black uh, but you have to be careful when you are doing this d5 breakthrough because this move has to be prepared if you play too early if you play d5 you see uh, for e takes d5 e takes d5 you could be left with an isolated pawn and an isolated pawn in such an early stage of the game i think could be a strategic disadvantage in black's position so that's why you have to be careful when you're doing this move d5 i think you should at least prepare this move with uh, rook to d8 and then to search maybe for a d5 breakthrough because also we can notice here that the queen is on the default so then you wouldn't worry so much if the default opens then you can have this uh, decent attack against the queen so that's why as i said the d5 is a breakthrough idea but you have to be careful when you are doing this kind of move so okay we have talked uh, now about the strategies by black the main strategy i think here for white is this uh, kingside attack with f4 e5 f5 and similar stuff even g4 in some occasions could be an opportunity but you should be careful here from white's perspective when you push the pawns in front of the king uh, that you're leaving also a little bit your spaces in front of the king unprotected so if you just advance the pawns too much then of course black could 
attack your uh, squares that you're left behind so now for instance if a6 b5 happens in black's position and you play something like bishop to b7 then the light core bishop could attack here this long diagonal and uh, co could cause you many tactical problems so as i said be careful here also what you're doing with the white pieces so it's a double-edged opening as i said so in the continuation we have now knight to b5 queen to b8 and now a4 in this way stop 15 actually prevented this uh, queen side attack with a6 b5 because this uh sorry uh, this move a6 is simply not working because we simply retreat to d4 and now you see b5 is simply not working here anymore so you don't have any expansions here on that side that your basically goal uh, is not working here for sure so here what you could try after move a6 and knight to d4 this wasn't played in the game but i was quite curious what would happen for instance if uh, black plays now the move bishop to b4 uh, should white protect this position now with the move f3 or what should uh, um, uh, why do here actually in this position uh, the cool part is that you can even advance the pawn to f4 here so you don't have to uh, be careful about your e4 pawn anymore because you can play sort of a wild gambit line this wasn't played in the game but i wanted to show you this line after move a6 and a4 and uh, now this move bishop to b4 now after move f4 look at this okay uh, black could take maybe the knight out on c3 b takes c3 but now after move knight to e4 uh, this is um, not a good position anymore for black the pieces are getting more and more exposed now we played just play knight to c6 you can play d takes c6 and look at this now bishop to d3 is even here an opportunity and now there are basically two choices what you could do knight to c3 seems like a good move but actually look at this bishop to h7 king to h7 queen to d3 you retreat the, with the king and now after move queen to c3 okay again white is uh, down a pawn but the problem is now black has problems where to go with the light square bishop the black square bishop is simply paralyzed you cannot develop it in a, such an easy way even if you try here something like b6 maybe to play bishop to b7 rook to b1 will happen and you lose the battle here on this square b6 even if you try something like e5 here uh to advance the pawn to maybe include your light square bishop into the game then white will simply play f5 and i think we should know about this tactical motif in the middle game stage after move f5 and now f6 is also a threat so where are you going with the bishop really the bishop is paralyzed really wild stuff could happen so that's why i think this uh, bishop to b4 uh, goal is simply not working let's see a different opportunity as we said you can maybe take it out we play knight to c6 we play bishop to d3 let's see if you retreat to f6 it's not getting better because we'll just chase this knight uh, now the threat is of course to take out g takes f6 and then you have a weakened pawn structure in front of the king what you could do is maybe this idea knight to d5 but now we're including just the queen into the game and i think from this point on it's a one-way ticket we just play rook to f3 rook to h3 queen to h4 with the support of the both of these bishops uh, i'm sure that you would find for sure sort of a tactical idea here from white's perspective so as i said this is in my opinion not working to play this bishop to b4 idea whenever you maybe face a similar position consider maybe even the option to sacrifice your pawn on e4 just in order to get a beautiful piece activity so this was not possible so after move a4 that's why here this engine uh, uh, rebel didn't play the move a6 simply played b6 the, is trying of course not to develop just the lies for bishop and maybe get this final breakthrough with the move d5 so in the continuation we have f4 as we said we have talked about the main strategy now for white f4 is a beautiful plan we have d6 prepare uh, pre protecting the e5 score because if you don't do that then e5 is very very dangerous here in black's position so that's why d6 very normal idea we have knight to d4 bishop to b7 and now bishop to d3 and there are now many choices again what black could do let's again see what happens if black goes now for the d5 breakthrough i was very curious what would happen this wasn't again played in the game but uh, i think we should notice what's going on now in the center of the board after move d5 now white doesn't have to even actually play on this uh, isolated pawn idea by taking the pawn on d5 white can simply pass through with the move e5 and okay probably black would play knight to e4 then we play knight a6 6 uh, bishop to c6 and now after move knight to b5 a6 knight to d4 look at this uh white has cemented now the position here in the center of the board will eventually play now the move c3 and now again i think we have the same plan 
something like rook to f3 rook to h3 queen to h5 including all of the pieces into the game and when the queen in one moment maybe leaves this diagonal we can even search for some f5 ideas this could be very interesting so uh okay maybe black has a powerful knight on e4 but uh, in my opinion it's something that's not bothering us because this knight is not preventing us to get um, uh, with our queen into the game maybe here on g4 when the knight one is at on f6 then of course it's protecting very important squares um, uh, here for white but now uh, i think uh, this is a perfect position a perfect attacking position in uh, for white so as i said this is also not working so d5 immediately is simply too slow you're not doing so much in in the center of the board so after move bishop to d3 here uh this engine um a rebel tried this main plan from the beginning tried again this queen side attack with the move b5 but stockfish plays now on his idea so queen to f3 queen to h3 and similar stuff uh maybe idea is also to get e5 then liberating this long diagonal so this is now the main tactical shot uh here some kind of an idea around the square h7 so we have now b5 so it's now sort of a desperate move by black uh, you can even take out i think the pawn but so far stockfish didn't want to touch anything anymore on the queen side stockfish is saying i don't care about the queen side anymore i have a perfect activity on the king side so now stockfish played simply out with some potential attacks here on, on the long diagonal improve the position of the king we have now b4 doesn't matter you got your fun you get one tempo but actually this tempo is helping out white now because now white stockfish here rerouted the knight and is actually maneuvering the knight towards the king side where stockfish wanted to attack the position anyway so with the move b4 as i said you basically helped out white in order to improve the minor piece so we have knight to d4 knight takes d4 queen to c7 now finally uh here uh, rebel connected the rooks and now bishop to d2 stockfish attacks the pawn we have queen to b6 c3 we have b takes c3 and now bishop to c3 here stockfish found a beautiful way how to reroute the bishop on a better square now the bishop is at least targeting maybe not immediately but indirectly uh this pawn on g7 so now again e5 or maybe even f5 could work so uh, you should wait a little bit and search as i said just for opportunities because both of these bishops are lined up now against black's king so we have now a5 and uh, this move i think uh, the the rebel engine played in order to maybe get rid of the light square bishop in order to maybe play something like bishop to a6 getting rid of this uh, annoying light square bishop but now stockfish continues simply the plan plays queen to h3 and it's now targeting the h7 weakness now the main tactical goal is of course as we said e5 d takes e5 d takes e5 and then if the knight moves somewhere to uh, maybe even deliver checkmate on h7 so now comes the critical moment of the game many things can be played uh, here for black black could play let's see this opportunity black could play maybe this idea bishop to a6 to finally get rid of this light square bishop if you move the bishop of course you lose the exchange but now we're simply playing on our main idea e5 you take we take out the knight and this attack comes of course with a double attack uh, here against the bishop and also the bishop on d3 saying you could maybe take out the rook uh, bishop to f1 now we still take uh here this bishop on e7 you could maybe escape with the rook or you can maybe play a check at least getting some kind of material but now we simply take queen to g2 you have to move the rook and now with knight to f5 the game is simply lost there is not a good way anymore to protect uh, the g7 weakness even if you play g6 then you get a beautiful beautiful checkmate here with the knight on h6 the, uh, this e7 pawn is protecting the f8 square uh, you cannot move the king beautiful beautiful checkmate so see bishop to a6 is not working so let's see now what happens if we, for instance take out the pawn on e4 it seems also uh, like a logical idea we play simply bishop to e4 bishop to e4 and now knight to e6 it was again a beautiful tactical shot you cannot play this idea again bishop to g2 again queen to g2 comes uh, with this attack against the pawn g7 so you don't have time to take out the knight and again the game is over if you take here f takes e6 then we play queen to e6 comes with the check you cannot uh, escape uh, here to a check because we lose you lose the bishop and then also the bishop on uh, e4 is hanging and also the pawn on g7 so you would be forced to play something like rook to f7 protecting your bishop but now with bishop to uh, pardon me queen takes e4 this is a much much better 
uh, position now for white white is up a pawn uh, has now also this uh, as a clear target this is a weakness the rook is hanging so uh, this is i think a completely winning game here so these two moves bishop to a6 you see knight to e4 uh, both of these tactical ideas are not working in the continuation here instead of the both of these moves here uh the engine rebel tried finally this move d5 and it, in my opinion it made really sense that now you're breaking the position but actually this is again not working because stockfish played e5 again the same goal again uh here the engine uh, rebel cemented the knight on e4 but now comes the stunner as we said the queen left and that was the point that i talked about if you remember in one particular moment when the queen is leaving this diagonal then the f5 breakthrough is really possible uh from this point on stockfish is playing really some monstrous monstrous moves so here after move f5 obviously you don't want to take e takes f5 is not good knight to f5 is coming into the game so uh, the bishop is hanging will include again the queen into the game so it's simply not working so after move f5 here in the continuation we have bishop to uh, c5 double attack of course uh, twice the knight is attacked here uh, um, twice by the bishop and the queen but stockfish plays a brilliant idea rook to f4 it's just leaving now uh this uh, knight unprotected here uh the rebel engine accepted the challenge played bishop to d4 but now f6 this is a really really wild idea if you play of course g takes f6 this is not working with just simply take a uh, rook to g4 uh, you're getting out of this mess and now you have to escape and now bishop to e4 we have here this idea a d takes e4 but now with queen to h6 there's not a good way anymore to protect this position even if you try we play queen to f6 and the game is over so this is not working so after move bishop to uh, pardon me if you play here after move f6 if you play bishop to c3 if you just uh trying to get rid of the bishop then the tactical goal is this one bishop to e4 d takes e4 still we play rook to g4 and now the threat is rook takes g7 followed with queen to h7 delivering a checkmate here you can play g6 as we said but now we can play queen to h6 and uh, the game is over there's not a good way anymore to protect this position so f remove f6 that's why uh, here um, um the rebel engine tried bishop to e3 attacking the rook now on f4 but now bishop to uh, e4 is played anyway so you don't have time to take out the rook because you get checkmated here on h7 that's the main issue so that's why we have to play d takes e4 but now f remove rook to g4 in this position uh it's basically over because h6 you have to play uh, if you play again here this move uh, g6 then rook to h4 is going to happen there's not a good way anymore again to protect the, you have to play something like rook to, uh, pardon me h5 then we still play rook to h5 g takes h5 and now we just play queen to g3 you have to just maybe bring the bishop in between we take it out king to h7 and now it's again checkmate so really really a wild stuff so as i said g6 is not working so that's why after move rook to g4 h6 was played by uh by rebel but now rook to e1 attacking the bishop now the bishop retreated here to g5 but now after move rook to g5 in this position a rebel resigned so what's the point uh, the point is here h takes g5 you can maybe play but now with queen to h5 the queen is coming into the game um there's not again good way to protect this position whatever you do g6 we just play queen to h6 if you play here to, uh, this one then still we can take e takes f6 and now this pawn is hanging so it's really really game over so really wild stuff what is same quite quite um, a wild attack after rook to g5 uh, you see this is not working simply too much pressure this pawn is now basically the most important attacking piece here of whites really wild attack played by the fish so finally let's go back this d5 breakthrough happened but uh, it was simply too slow e5 uh, knight to e4 but now f5 as i said this was the breakthrough motif bishop to c5 attacking the knight but now stockfish played the rook lift and you know whenever stockfish is playing rook lift then probably some wild things will happen for sure so okay i hope that you enjoy the game really really wild stuff i think uh, this is um, an important game this i think something worth to study many of you will reach i think similar position maybe even the same positions in some occasions you see how stockfish dismantled this french taimanov 
Patrick of Sicilian with some wild technical ideas basically prevented this ideas of b5 here first and the beginning of the game prevented also some ideas of d5 so the basic strategic goals uh, here uh, Stoffer dismantled sort of played on his normal attack on the king side attack included all of the pieces into the game and uh, built in a beautiful attacking formation then with some great tactical skills uh, destroyed here this other top engine so okay i hope that you enjoyed the game if you want to see more beautiful attacking games like this check out my comment chess games play uh, computer series with some more games played by stock for 15 and some other top engines and if you like this content don't forget to subscribe to my channel see you soon with some more videos and what to say chess is the best of course